And on today's episode, uh, the address listed on the good old Raycon, oh yeah, did not match at all. Luckily, there was Bargain Barn across the street. And they told us to look for that and a gray building. So we found it. Stick around, find out. <laughs> Go figure, you're not the one involved, you're the good kid. Yeah. Oh, we got one on the golf cart honking horns. Oh, goodness. And the other one's honking the train horn on the truck. We're going we're gonna to hit Waffle House before we pick up this uh, load a little bit later. Oh, yeah. Okay, now we're done with those shenanigans. Oh, take the brake off. <laughs> now, this thing has a brand new battery. It's still barely started because it's uh, it cold. In case we don't want the horn too much because the neighbors might be trying to relax. All these people live around us. <laughs> what neighbors? <laughs> Luckily, our neighbors to our left and right are pretty cool with us, but uh, people across the street, yeah, they're pretty cool with us. But two of them are, we don't really talk to. So. <laughs> oh, I remember the guy gave me the glow and dark ball. He's pretty nice. You like the truck, Mark? He does like the truck. He's our neighbor. He is. Let's go get some breakfast, and then Dad's got to go to work. And then what's tomorrow? Beach. The beach. No, they cut them down so like Dad's big truck can make it back here. When they have concerts, they have big trucks too, or they have oh, uh, so big tour good? bus. <laughs> like a big mass truck with a bus. They'll like roll the tires, I'm like. It's kind of hard to roll 42s without <laughs> blowing up your drivetrain. What 42s? Uh, we have 42 inch tires on this thing. There's our officer friend. What's going on, buddy? What's that mean? 42 inch tires. That's how big they are. That's pretty big. You could, most likely, I can burn them in the uh, rain or snow, but on a hard con or asphalt, I uh, don't want to blow up the new transmission we just put in. Talking about me. Yeah, I'm talking about me driving it. So we came to the Waffle House. Oh yeah. Let's get some grub. Kai Kai, come on. Let's go. All right, all right. On the table back there, guys, right here. Come on, go over there. Yeah. See, at the bottom, that's called pulp. So you gotta shake it. Yeah, no, it won't come out, it'll just mix it up. Or just let it upside down. Then you can open it, okay? Pulls our serve. Let's do this. Cash ready? Oh, yeah. yeah I, I'm going to stab it. Oh, my goodness. Don't ask me why, but ketchup is life for these kids. I don't know. They dip their bacon in ketchup. Watch your hand, Casey. That's why you like it? Yeah. Mm. This tastes good. Okay, we're all done and fed up. Now we got to let her eat. Go wash this thing off and get on the road. Hey, Kaka, the yeah. whole truck, the whole truck, not just one area. Run. Yeah, spray the wheels. Spray, okay, I'm good. Well, we figure we wash the truck for a second. <laughs> good job, Bubba. Okay, time to rinse, boys, time to rinse. There we go, oh yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, you can go in. Yeah, you can do the golf cart too. Thanks for helping me clean it. She's all shined up again. I'm gonna have to get somebody to come out here and wax it. Uh, we have a great detailer. Just have to find this card. But um, on top of that, uh, we're gonna do a service on the green APU. You got it? Cool. Show me. Awesome. Um, filters. I was gonna do it today, but I don't know if I have, have time because I gotta go up and get this load. Can you do the golf cart? Yeah. Yeah, you can spray a little bit. There you go tire shine um but yeah we're gonna have to do that probably before we get the math i'll do it when i get back from uh this run to florida and we'll get that thing serviced because i have about 20 hours left before i need my service you gotta pull hard 
Yeah, we don't we don't spray it on the motorcycle because <laughs> I want to get it all over the chrome wheel. There's not much tire, lots of wheel. Um, so we're going to use the Shell T6. I was trying to find a T5, but they didn't have any at Walmart, so I'm going to go full synthetic. Um, Eric over there at Green APU, awesome encyclopedia information. They see and see a lot of their own parts, and what's great about Green APU is they use uh, that's okay, not so much in one area. They uh, use a lot of common parts like a Nissan Pathfinder uh, belt tensioner. So anything that you can that you're going to need to buy that might go out over time will be available at any O'Reilly or Advanced or AutoZone. Good job, Happy Face. <laughs> yeah, and a smile. Good job. But yeah, we're going to get that going. Probably do that after we get back from this run. But right now, I got to go pick that up, and I got to tire shine this big old truck. Let's do it. They're going to stay in your house and watch you because Dad is going to go to work while Mama's hair is almost done. Is that cool? Yeah, that, that, that truck is so cool. Really? Can I have my iPad to go in my big truck? Because I need to take it with me. It's my map and my ELD. Yeah, you are playing Roblox on Dad's iPad. All right. Pablo. Casper. Be good, please. Keep fighting with uh, Lucy. I don't know where it's going hugs. Mm, I'm right back. I like your HB. Tomorrow, Huntington Beach. Tomorrow we go to the beach. To the beach. And yes. Can I go to the beach? You want a vroom vroom minivan? Or one little one. Ooh, wow. Ah, that's 3.5 liters of awesomeness. It can rev. It can rev. Come on. <laughs> I got to go. Yes, baby. The drone is in a big truck. I know you always care about the drone. Come on, Case. I got to go. I love you. Mmm. Okay, go back and be good for Miss Denise. I'll be right back. Mm -hmm. I love you. I love you. You're good. Thank you. I love you, I, I love you too. I, yeah, you know, I know you love Lily. <laughs> okay. You. Love you too, baby. All right, that truck looks good. She's shining again. And here's this one. Love you too, baby. Love you, dude. I'll be right back, okay? Honk the horn when you get far. Okay, we'll go to the beach tomorrow. Honk the horn every time you go to work. Okay, love you. Oh, goodness. <laughs> Back to the dry van life. Okay, let's get this thing pre-tripped. Head up the hill. Pick up a load. Finally. And that is the green APU. If you don't know what I'm talking about, that is going to run our air conditioning while we are, or at least while I am unloading in uh, Florida, because I'm going to take the load down there, but I'm going to drop the boys and T-dubs off at the hotel. Actually, I'm going to stay at the hotel, too, because it doesn't deliver till Thursday, and we'll be there tomorrow, so... We're going to get that service when we get back. We should be uh, right at all of our service hours because it gives you a timer. I think it's a 1,000 hours. Don't quote me. Once that's done, it says, hey, you need to change your oil, change your filters, get this all cleaned up. So they give you a special little uh, service kit, which I'll show you a little bit later. Check the oil. Check the fluids. We are good to go. Let's go walk around our dry van. Our, our uh, landing gear's back up. We're locked in. Let's check these hubs. And uh, yeah, it's pretty cool to give you that service kit. They have multiple locations throughout the nation. Oh, hubs are looking good. Um, to go ahead and service them if you don't want to do it yourself. But um, I like to do stuff myself. Saves you money, saves you time. But I had mine installed actually at Nashville. Uh, location, it was awesome over there, nice guys. Okay, let's do a light test and let's uh, let this thing warm up. And this is that service kit I'm talking about. So it is a thousand hours, but all kinds of goodies. You get your filters, oil, air, and I believe fuel. Oh yeah, that's, that's oil. So that first one. Okay, cool, cool. We'll get all those switched out and we'll place it with that T6 show or teller. And uh, that's T5 is what we run inside the truck. So Eric was like, you can use a, a synthetic blend, but pretty much use whatever you use in your truck. And I said, okay, well, that's what we'll do. So then we can top it off if we need to. We'll have some on hand. But right now, let's get up and get this load. Okay, let's turn and burn. Last time we worked uh, before we took those reefers yesterday, March 6th. Isn't that crazy? Over two weeks. Uh, sad. We did do a whole week of Uber, but we were looking for loads during that week, but there was just nothing out there. So, Alrighty. Let's get this 
thing going. She is aired up. She is warmed up. Everything's reading great. Let's do it. Low pressures at 35. There we go. Volts are 13 and a half, 14. Amps plus five. We are looking good. We got some fuel still from the fueling up, so we should be able to get up there, get down. We won't have to fuel again until we probably are leaving Georgia or probably down in South Carolina. We'll look for the best fuel again through all the fuel cards. RTS, RXO, look at the invite codes and I have contact information for each person that will set you up with those accounts in the description below. So go down there, um, mud flap, truck smarter, and a good old QT. <laughs> Someday maybe QT will have their own uh, card or something, but as of right now, they just post the price. Yesterday, RTS won, so we got fuel from them. Now it's time to turn and burn. We'll pick this up, we'll come back here tonight. We'll sleep tonight, reset our clock, and then um, take off early tomorrow morning once our clock resets. Get down and check in the hotel, and I deliver the load on Thursday morning, so. I love this little downhill right here because you can see the mountains off there in the distance. A little bit hazy today. A lot, I think we had a lot of burn going on because it was a lot hazy uh, coming through 26 yesterday with those trailers. A little par three golf course down there. It's just short par threes. It's partially owned by Justin Timberlake, which is random. But uh, he must know somebody who did something. We're getting off right here. We're going to head up. Let's put the jakes on. Shift down to 17th. Uh, we'll skip 16 and go to 15. There we go. And then we yield onto this road. So we're going to keep our speed to 40 and see what we got. Get down a little bit more. And yeah, this will kind of around downtown Greenville where we had a great Uber week last week. There we go. Uh oh, okay, the light just turned green, good. So we gotta go all the way to the left. It's 58 degrees today, guys. There we go, that was a nice transition. Smooth as butter. Let's get out Pleasant Bird. All right. Okay, we got something given out for free over here. I don't know what it is, a free tire check? Free fluid check, tire and fluid, so they can tell you exactly what's wrong with your car. <laughs> Which half the time, most of it's not even wrong. Um, okay, but this is that setup right here. I have a Ford Focus back there. They're going to the far right lane. And I got a Chevy Colorado behind them. Um, but I really have to kind of, I'm gonna let all these cars pass. There's another truck behind me. Because this turn is one of those turns where you, okay, the Chevy Colorado's let me in. Thank you, brother. Thank you very much. So we'll always watch those mirrors, because he knows I'm turning, and he knows this turn is uh, one of those opportunities where I can pinch somebody off right there. All right, appreciate it, Chevy Colorado. Yeah, watch those mirrors, guys. Someone's old shower getting taken away right there in the back of that truck. I appreciate it, Chevy Colorado. He saw the blinker. Put your blinker on early and watch those mirrors, and if no one's letting you in, just stop. Wait till it's wide open. Wait till no one's coming behind you. Um, because like you saw in that Uber video, appreciate it, man. Got right there on the right, let us in. Um, when I was Ubering, that guy pitched off that minivan. I mean, they don't care. Those, those cars, are for, they don't, they're just looking at, oh, I got an area to go. I can get up here and go because it's probably waiting too long. And they get in right next to you and then bam, you're running into their uh, beautiful minivan for uh, inside of your trailer. All right, here we go. Before we head up the mountain, we'll go ahead and stop at our Sphinx. Look, they're finally building something right there. I don't know what it is. It looks like storefront, I would imagine. Because it doesn't really have a apartment building look. And if it's a hotel, usually they build the uh, fire escape first. Yeah, that looks all cinder block. It looks like that one. Some kind of store or something. A little strip mall up here. Everybody needs shopping, as long as it's not a car wash. If it's a car wash, oh my goodness. We have a lot of car washes. Wow, we have a lot of trucks here too. That guy's got his tandems pretty far back. Maybe he's just distributing the weight. But uh, yeah. Let's get behind the hot shot. Okay, let me go. Thank you, appreciate it. Appreciate it. Uh, I might just pull next to the hot shot, even though my truck, I'll stay behind him then if I need to pull out because he's walking right there to the left so he's going inside brand new looking trailer looks like he hasn't used that one too much just want to be out of the way for anybody else trying to pull in here we'll check our hubs and uh refresh and then get back up, up the mountain because this is right before you start really getting into no man's land where there's not anybody up there so all right let's grab our 
get one of these guys. 30 bucks, Harbor Freight. Little thermal uh, temperature gauge. Temptation, what's it called actually? It's called a, who knows? Infrared thermometer. Watch out now, Traverse. Okay. You can kind of check your hubs. There you go. 90, 94, 96, 95. You want them to be consistent, so you want ones that's they're supposed to it's supposed to be that, that it can't be um I thought that was something smashed up there, but it's a trash truck up there. Um 98. Now this one's high, 105. It's our back right. And she has plenty of fluid in her. So we'll keep an eye on her. See it's right between the full and the ad. This is the one that had the loose bolts, so it's kind of leaking around, but we tightened them. So alright. She's not leaking or nothing. She's just warm. Keep an eye on her. But yeah, always check your hubs, guys. We got brand new brakes all the way around back here. Take care of your trailer as much as you take care of your truck. I like it. My diesel burneth burn orange. Nice W9 86 inch sleeper. But look at that trailer, guys. You see how he has it all the way forward? Um, that's called a Conestoga. So that'll roll all the way down the whole flatbed. So instead of tarping, you just close it and it tarps itself, uh, expensive trailers, but that's what I used to run when I was running hardwood flooring. Um, had to catch up to him because I normally run this really slow and he's booking it, but normally you want to keep that closed, I would think, but whatever. He's got it open running up the hill. We've got a long truck up here who's definitely going to be slowing down once these grades start coming, but just wanted to show you guys that. That's how it, it opens like that. You kind of remove it like a regular flatbed and then just reclose it again and you don't have to tarp because it's fully enclosed. So, cool stuff. Our logging buddy's actually pulling off right here, so it's kind of got doubles, a little shorter logs. Give him some rooms and chase our Conestoga up, uh, up the hill now. Here we go. Look how thick that concrete is right there. That's crazy. A uh, good foot and a half. And I think they pour asphalt on top of it because they're pouring asphalt on the left side. Over there, they were pouring asphalt right here on the right side too, but uh, man, they are really getting to work on this. This is gonna be a huge four lane on both sides, which they really need. And there's the bridge getting built over too to make it wider, so. Been a long project. I cannot remember when this wasn't going on, but uh, <laughs> yeah, see there, the asphalt over the concrete, okay. That should last a long time. Okay, we passed the way station. It's still closed on this side because they got all this construction going on. We're almost to the uh, 40, heading up towards Knoxville. But yeah, they're laying asphalt right there, steamrolling it, getting it done. Little sections at a time. There you go. Trucks dumping the asphalt into the paver. All right, the other one on the other side was a little bit different. He was kind of like shooting it over to the other side. Dump truck backed into one thing, and then that one sh like made belted it over to the other side and dumped it into the, the paver, so different setup than that one was. That guy over there's got the motor open on that paint. Jeez, piece for him. Hope he's all right. He's got a cat in there. All right, we got a DPS just hanging out over here on the left. Okay. Yeah, that, that, see, they're still waiting to concrete that and then uh, asphalt that. Lots of work. I think we're still a year out or so, probably more. And one more thing, any of you guys in construction or laying concrete, can't really see it, but if you pause the video maybe, there's these little green bars, like the rebar laid down before they lay the concrete. Uh, how does that help? What does that do? Does it take structural, make it more structural? Does it have vibration help? Like, what does that do with those little bars that are, they're green bars that are about a foot and a half long in between two like rebar pieces that are holding it up. So, what does that mean? What do those do? What does all that rebar do? We are in North Carolina now following a sawdust trailer. I actually pushed or uh, pulled one of those also. It was um, a walking floor, which means it's pretty cool. It's, they're expensive trailers, but the floor will kind of like shift one side to the other, every other uh, track, and it'll, it'll shift what's ever in the trailer out the back. I don't know if that one's a walking floor. I don't know how to tell. If you look underneath them, you can definitely see all the mechanisms, but uh, this one was a walking floor, and it would just push the sawdust out the back and it was pretty cool i would take it to a uh, different like chemical plants they would use i only took it like twice but they would use the sawdust for something with their uh, chemical process
processing. So that's a sawdust trailer. Right in front of us, they're gonna take that somewhere. And we're all coming in here. A little bumpy, a little bumpy. They're actually putting this on the scale, but that uh, I haven't done this in a while, but if you're new to CBL school, um, if you come into a scale like this, I can see past the sawdust trailer to my left, and you guys can. Um, the light's just green, so just roll through nice and slow, whatever the speed limit says. Unless it's red, then you stop, but <clears throat> it's green, so you don't need to stop. Just roll right through. They're just looking at your numbers on the side of your truck, seeing if they see anything suspicious, seeing if half your front fender and your bumper's missing, and they want to check the rest of your truck. Uh, that kind of stuff. Let's see. So, yeah, green light. So, just don't, you don't even have to stop at the stop sign. Just keep rolling through. Nice and slow. But some people will stop, just like this. Some people don't follow the speed limit through Florida which is 45 we'll be doing that tomorrow i can't wait to get to florida it's supposed to be nice too like mid 80s all you florida people down there enjoying it and uh, we hope we can enjoy it there with you too get these boys a little sunshine fun in, in the beach for uh, before they get too big and then they don't want to hang out with us on the beach we'll be building sand castles so it'll be whatever's going oh now they turned it red okay so they red lighted the uh sawdust truck so now we will stop and then they gave them the green so Unless they turn it red again, we will keep going. But um, keep it green. Yeah, keep it green so they don't want you to stop. So just because he stopped doesn't mean you got to stop. If they keep it green like that, just keep rolling. This guy's got the guy up in his truck right here. They will come up in your truck, guys. Kind of look in there and smell. See if anything's out of the ordinary. So uh, keep the window down and just be ready for them. Welcome back to the uh, scale house. It's not another good day. It's a beast ramble. Some big old stacks in that truck across the way. See that guy? Got the cool teeth coming out of his grill and the big old stacks. That thing probably sounds pretty good. Was it JB Hunt uh, truck? I don't know if that's power only or not. I didn't see the truck. Why do you guys comment that uh, power only is better? It, in fact, is not, guys. I mean, some people can make a decent living adding, but you got add it, but pretty much just one step above being company and sometimes not. Uh, the rates are just horrible compared to what you can get on the spot market, even for right now. So uh, power only is something you might do in case you don't have a trailer for a little bit, but work on getting your own trailer. That's the best way to kind of control your destiny and make the money you want to make. So, all right, let's get up this 40. This truck in front of us is smoking up a storm. Um, we're coming to a stop right here. It's pretty cool on some of the rock faces back there. It's, it's pretty cold at night up here. It's 60 degrees right now, but there's a little ice. And he's, yeah, he's a diesel truck. You can smell that thing burning. Um, yeah, it's like ice sickles or whatever you want to call them all over on the side of the mountain. It's pretty cool looking. Let's see if we see any more of them. That poor truck up there, man, you better put some oil on that thing or check your injectors or check something. It's, it's puking on them. They must be going to one lane up here and probably working on the bridge is why. Let's see what we get. The good old Maggie Valley too. That's uh that's some cool car shows up there and that, that's a way to get up to that casino. And it is 2.30 right now. I did some trip planning. If you're new to truck and you're coming out here, you want to kind of double check your pickup and drop-offs. If you know where you're dropping off or picking up, you've been there before, cool. But this place, I don't think I've ever been to this this plant, but um, the address that they gave you, it's like 455, I forget the name, but I typed it in four different, three different ways. It kept taking me to like Indiana, or and then I typed in internal beverages, which what's the name of the company. It took me to, I think, California. So the address when it was typed in Newport, Tennessee did not come up. And then if you read the, the notes on the uh, Raycon or, or the, on the app for dispatch, which Pepsi again does not have, but Sage Robinson has their own dispatch and own tracking. Pepsi, work on your stuff, guys. You guys are horrible. Charging private carriers out here $50 for not tracking, but not giving us a way to track. Anyways, that's off Pepsi. Pepsi is in the doghouse for sure. But um, they have a little thing that says, take 296 to 25 east and it says across the street from this uh, like bargain barn so I typed in bargain barn Newport Tennessee and then sure enough it's off 
296 East 25. And it says, once you see Bargain Barn, look directly across the street at the gray building. So pay attention to those little notes they put in there because I looked everywhere. I was searching all over and I typed in, um, I actually got like a ping for a place, but it was like someone's house. Off, I forget what I typed in, but it, it was, I typed in Newport, Tennessee and that road name without the number. And it was a road, but it was like middle of nowhere. So pay attention to that trip plan. Make sure you try to know where you're going or look at those notes and they will tell you across the street from Bargain Barn. So we actually have Bargain Barn typed into our GPS. That's where we're heading. And then we're gonna look across the street. All right, let's get there. We had, we're on the one lane right now. The bridge is getting extended. They're not even close to being done with it. It's uh, but they're digging, they're excavating right now, chopping up stuff. They're not even close to building the bridge yet. So that'll be a while. So come up 40. Oh yeah, be a little bit wild. They already did the bridge up here, but now they're doing that bridge. And that's exit 447, I believe is where that bridge is at. This is like mile marker 19. Someone's like walking on the side of the road. Oh, they're okay. It's just an older gentleman over there, all black with a jacket. Here's another part of the bridge they're redoing, but they're a little bit further along on this one. The other one, they were just like digging out the other side of the bridge. All right. Well, making improvements to 40, but it's going to take some traffic. Think about that too when you're booking loads coming up here uh, or down here about the time of day and the traffic because they are uh, definitely making some moves on widening these lanes. These lanes. All right, let's go. Turn and burn time. Back at it. Okay, this guy was probably just an unfortunate, unlucky guy that got the. Uh, no trucks in the left lane lottery ticket right there but there's a bunch of guys that are staying in the left lane there's a clearly marked no trucks over three axles left lane but like that bobtail right there um and a bunch of trucks pulling trailers that just want to go faster than everybody else and i stay in the left lane if i'm passing up until this point and here we go there's all that ice i was talking about just by the chance of uh turning the camera on all that white right there that is ice Pretty cool, right? Because it normally is flowing down. I don't know if this is the exact spot, but one time we were going up somewhere, I think it was Gatlinburg or Dollywood, and T-Dubs jumped out and went, touched some of the fountain that was falling down because all that water coming off the hill. Like, see right there, still have water flowing on the right. You can barely see it. That one must get hit by the sun more during the end of the day where it's, where it's warmer or something. But there's all that white right there. There's ice. Pretty cool. All right, let's stay in our right lane and not get the uh, right lane lottery ticket from the uh, nice TPS officer. Right. Okay, exit 435. This is where that Weigels is. Weigels, Weigels. Um, and the, if you type in the address or you get something close to it, it's taking you to the right, which is taking you pretty much through this little town of Newport and all that stuff. But if you type it in again, uh, it is taking you to the left. So you gotta go, because it's right here, you'll see. You have the option left or right. You better make the right choice. <laughs> It's not hard to turn around back there. I mean, you just got to find the right area, but it definitely is not easy. So, yeah, you check trip plan, check your address. Uh, don't win the lottery for being in the left lane. That's an old log truck right there. See that thing? I don't know if that's a international or what it is. I think it's international. He left a nice puff of smoke for us. Nice bike in the back of that Ram, too. All kinds of stuff. But yeah, we're Newport, Tennessee now. We got a green light. Let's go. Make sure traffic stops because don't trust anybody else. This is your investment. All right. We're going to cruise over here. And then on the map, it looks like a big old uh, dirt field is where this place is at. So the last time Google Maps updated or iPhone Maps or whatever, Apple Maps, uh, it was a dirt field. So we're going to go ahead and head to that dirt field and pray that there's a great building there. We'll see what we get. But yeah, I've always... Make sure you're 100% confirmed on where you're going. And if they didn't write that little thing in the notes on that app, CH Robinson, it's the CH Robinson app or on load. And my buddy did give me a good rate on it. He uh, worked on it for me because they were offering it at like 1,800. And I said, man, that's kind of kind of weak for me going up the mountain to get a heavy load and take it all the way to Florida. He said, let me see what I can do. So he worked on it for me. But um, yeah, we're gonna go pick it up over here, Grandpa. That's a nice old Caprice right there. Station wagon. Probably get some grub up here after we get picked up. We're gonna be about an hour early. Yeah, pretty much right on the dot an hour early. And then um, probably get some food after that. Yeah, we're right behind. Oh, it's an old Mac. He's got Mac. Uh, my 
brakes are making noise. He's got a little kid in the middle too. You see that in the, in the window? He's got a little, uh, little buddy. All right, let's go. We're on the Mac. It's going to be some pretty cool landscape for uh, some drone footage. We'll do that after we get checked in. Okay, absolutely no truck drivers. So that's not the place we go. Let's see where we go. We'll just keep walking down. Well, that is a nice... Maybe it's not new. It just looks sleek in the front with that orange. Do it, right? But a uh, nice reefer unit right there. I don't know if he's been grabbing the same stuff or what. It looks like we found shipping. Okay. Okay, thank you. Slide tandems. Okay, cool. Okay, door number four. Okay, door number four. I like how it has that polished aluminum front and some of those dry vans. Maybe I'll get one of those someday, but right now ours is doing fine. She said, don't worry about sliding tandems, get in door four and a green light, come back in, get your paperwork. Easy as that. And we're gonna be the only truck here, so it should be a quick load. Okay, here we go. The only thing not super ideal about building a brand new facility like this is uh, you make the trucks approach from the right side, which makes you blindside. <laughs> I mean, people are parking over there for customers, so uh, I, don't, I don't get it. Even today in 2023, there's still, who cares about truck drivers? Because like if there was a bunch of trucks here, you're gonna have a heck of a time blindside not to hit one of these other trucks. <laughs> and it didn't really extend this uh, concrete out far enough that I could make my trailer 100% straight. I'm gonna make it work so I don't have to mess up there. You can see other people put their wheels off the front of this uh, concrete, which is <laughs> unfortunate. <laughs> we'll, we'll, uh, we'll get it done, but man, someday I'll think about truckers. Probably not today though. So now that 680 just took off, <clears throat> I have to pull over here more because I can't get my trailer around enough. Now I can get my trailer around, but we all these customer cars parked here. <laughs> so, I'd have to blindside, which is not a big deal, but for 
newer guys out here, you know, you don't want to take someone's Jetta out just to get in the door. Maxing out my steering. Let's go up. Sweet drone footage, right? That's all the concrete I was talking about that they ripped up. And just that skyline. It's kind of a hazy day, but still really pretty out there. Uh, we got the green light pretty quickly. Only like maybe full five or six times they went in the trailer. So I don't know if we have a full trailer or not, but one time it was like a boom. They landed that. Uh, they jumped that fork lift in the back of my trailer. So maybe they're mad about that or sad. And those are pretty cool. How they, those are just like locked in together like giant Legos. If you can see those. That's how they made the retaining wall. Pretty, pretty, probably expensive, but pretty cool. Let's get our paperwork. Got paperwork really quick. Sign one paper and she gives it to you. So it says 40,000 pounds. So they must have some robots pushing in a bunch of boxes at once. We'll take it. We, we expected it to be that heavy. Let's get down to Florida for some spring break. First, let's get home, pack up. Newport Bargain Barn, thanks again. decisions because we don't have enough fuel I didn't fill up at the 7-eleven at 346 the other day I put uh, $300 in which ended up being with my discount like 270 something so um, we don't have enough to make it all the way to Sarasota so I'm part looking at um, all the fuel cards and this one seems to be the best for where I'm at up here but uh, RTS does have that Duncan exit 63 right there off 85 is still 338 um, that's the best I've found or any of the cards right now. But Mudflap actually has it for one cent cheaper than RXO. And all three of them have this, uh, this Waggles, Weagles in their network. So RXO is like 342.9, uh, so 343. Uh, Mudflap is 344, 342. See, look 
making this turn again. Here we go. I have to wait for this Nissan. There's no way I'm making this turn. And then they put that rock right there. I have to push it way out left to get into this place. Um, and I put my blinker on because I got a car behind me. I don't want him shooting around. All right, let's make it. Somebody parked a trailer right there. At least that truck's pretty far over. But there we go, make it. Anyways, yeah, the fuel cards. So, RXO RTS. Uh, so, I'm going to use mud flap only because it's only a sense different than uh, RX or RTS. No, RXO had the best one. Sorry. No, yeah, RXO had the best one for here. One cent cheaper than um, mud flap, but mud flap doesn't charge any fees. Like, there's no card activation or card usage fee or nothing like that. So, that's even better. So, we're going to use mud flap. The winner. And I spoke too soon, guys. Um, Truck Smarter, I just checked them again. They are actually 329, but it's five miles up that way, the opposite direction of where I'm going. And I'm not filling up up here, so that's pretty cool. Um, I'll show it right here on the right. Check out Truck Smarter, it's just like Mud Flap. You just reserve a fuel code, they turn the pump on for you, and then it charges you to your uh, credit card or bank account. So check them out. We'll be talking more about that and everything else going Truck Smarter when we're at Matt's on the 30th, so uh, yeah, just like Mud Flap, Truck Smarter has their own fuel network, and it's the cheapest of all the ones I have right now. I just don't want to go five miles in the opposite direction to get there, but 329. Okay, just like that, they have a little Mud Flap tablet in there, and thanks to all you guys, I forgot, I have $70 in unused balance, so that comes off $70 in fuel. That more than covers what it cost me to get up here and back down, so thanks a lot, guys. Uh, sign up at Mud Flap, check out the invite code below. Um, Every ten every time you sign up with it, I get ten dollars and you get ten dollars, so it's a win-win, or ten dollars off fuel. And Truck Smarter has the same kind of things going on that they're going to be in the works doing. But uh, the cool thing about Mud Flap also is it comes off your credit card, so if you don't want to pay RTS and RXO, we'll sometimes have the best uh, rate, but it comes straight out of draft out of your bank account, which is no big deal. It's your cash reserves, but the credit card is easier for me to keep track of all my business expenses, uh, including fuel. So I like the credit card, but. I don't mind it coming out of the draft either of your bank cap. Let's fuel her up. 359, we saved $30 on that little fuel fill up plus the 70 from you guys. So $100 savings, much appreciated. That'll get us down to this drop and back. So yeah, that's nice. Um, appreciate that. Appreciate you truck smarter. Appreciate you mud flap. RXO, RTS, everybody has different discounts, but right now, Truck Smarter won, but Mud Flap won the uh, referrals and the distance. Let's get going. And just like the guy next to me, don't pull up if you're in the right lanes <laughs> at this place because the other guys can't get past you. <laughs> so if I pull up to the front, there's no way the guy to my left is getting out. <laughs> just like the guy to my right did, so. Well, what theme of, the, of today's video is who engineers these places to like why not make the driveway bigger to the left I don't know whatever so yeah don't pull up if you're in the right lanes if you're in the left lane sure but maybe if you pull up somebody else might pull up and then you can't get out so if it's not too busy like the first half the pumps are open right now I would recommend not pulling up but be quick about it inside okay now let's get down this mountain we are fully loaded fully fueled time to roll Coming back down the mountain, almost into Nashville, and uh, we have our other way station going the other way. Take a picture right there, make sure you smile. Hello! They're really just taking a picture of your license plate and then they're running your numbers for your uh, company and see what your score is, all that kind of stuff. Because you have a CSA score, and that's like your safety rating. Um, the lower, the better. So, uh, truck must exit to a station. Okay, okay. That's kind of different. That sign's different. It didn't used to say that. Um, but that guy then must get the bypass. The guy with the motorhome is pulling in. Okay. <laughs> that, that sign was probably for the guy behind him, but the motorhome is pulling in. Let's get weighed. Set the brakes. Set the jakes. Get down to 35. We're at 45 right now. Surge your brakes just means push them and let off. Don't heat your brakes up too bad. Go. We're gonna go less than 35 because we're coming up on a little stop. Alright. 
roll your window down for the intercom. Yeah, I think the motorhome guy realized he's not supposed to be here. <laughs> he's like, I'm out of here. And we only have 40,000, just, just right at 40,000, so we shouldn't be, we not have to worry about being close to gross. Uh, gross is 80,000. If you're new to trucking, you can't be more than 80,000. And our truck, I think, is, what, 30, 35, 500 with the truck and trailer. And the APU. APU, some states give you an exemption of like 400, I think it's 400, 500 pounds, but not all states do. So you could really be like 80,400, but I don't know what all states do that. But. Do not brake hard while on the scale. You see that sign right there? It messes up the calibration of the scale. So it looks like they got it just green light again, but the Prime guy's kind of, I think he's still going to stop. Let's see what Prime's doing. Got the green light, buddy. Barbecue bacon wrap. Had to. Um, stop at the Sphinx on the way back down. Get some early dinner because when we get home, we're going to go to sleep and uh, get on the road early in the morning once our clock resets. And on that note, God bless you guys. Fun little run up and down from Tennessee. We got a beautiful sunset and we have a beautiful truck. So God bless you guys. That whip on the right side is staying nice and straight because. Um, hold on to CB one so I gotta put the other one on this side check out uh, just trucking dot shop and your hats and your hoodies anything like that coming in t-shirt season and we will have a little bit of merchandise on hand at Mar at uh, Matt's also March 30th we'll be at the uh, truck smarter all day come see us there and yeah we'll be heading down to Florida in the morning so I'm gonna get home reset reset the clock reset the mine and hit down there's a little bit of beach time with some spring breakers some young spring breakers so God bless you and I'll see you on the next one